It's the moment that focused the eyes of the world on one tiny courtroom in Michigan. Grant me five minutes in a locked room with this <laughs> demon. <laughs> An enraged father lunges at the perverted physician who molested his three daughters. A doctor now infamous for treating and abusing hundreds of the most famous female athletes in the world, now getting their chance to confront him. You took complete advantage of my innocence. I'm happy you will be spending the rest of your life in prison. Enjoy hell, by the way. One by one, they face off with the monster. You were, in fact, the monster that they said you were. Bravely speaking about the unspeakable. I can't even remember when the first time was. I just know that I was only 10 years old. No young athlete was safe from his abuse. I remember your obnoxious laugh and how loud it was. 150 plus in court and at least 100 more all sharing the cry, me too. And then you would slurp the drool off your lip. I don't see you laughing now. They're talking about Larry Nasser, the physician who turned into Dr. Evil. They want their tushy to be tight. You've heard about Nasser's despicable deeds. Now you're about to hear firsthand from some of the brave women who refuse to be victims and instead are survivors. And I think you both have been so courageous. Today, six of Nasser's accusers are entrusting me to tell their stories. I just have to hug you. Cool. Sharing new details you've never heard until now. Gymnast Larissa Boyce may very well be Nasser's first victim. She claims the abuse started in 1997. That's 21 years ago, long before many he preyed on were even born. And how old were you when you first met him? Um, I was 16. He was an Olympic doctor, and so I thought the world of him, I thought I was the luckiest person to be able to be seen by this man. And what was the injury that brought you to see him? I had an injury uh, to my lower back when I was practicing, and I slipped off the vault, and, and then, so then Kathy Clagus, my head coach, had recommended that I go see him at, at his office. This is disturbing video of Nasser in his Michigan State University office with another young patient. So instead of doing this force, I want her to think of it as this force. Look closely at him taping the young girl's ankle. So this is inch tape, and this is inch and a half tape. Watch as he puts the roll of tape next to her leg. She instantly moves the tape in a sort of protective gesture, almost as if to block him. I know it's hard to talk about, so if you don't want to, that's okay. But do you mind sharing anything about what he did to you? I have a couple different memories that really stand out. And you know, the worst one that I can remember was he turned the lights off, took his belt off, and I had me undressed from the waist down, and he started uh, performing his supposed medical treatment on me. Um, and then he was making grunting sounds like he was And he did this to hundreds of young athletes, molesting them under the guise of a medical procedure. Somebody knocked on the door, and that's the only reason it stopped. I tried to get up and he pushed my head back down and said, um, told me not to move, uh, and kind of laughed, this nervous laugh. And I got up really quick and turned around and his shirt was all untucked. And he was wiping his hands off on a towel and then he kind of tossed the towel at me and went to the door. He tossed the towel at you. Mm -hmm. I'm like so revolted right now. Yeah. Larissa says when she complained to her coach, Kathy Clagus, Clagus told her, you are the problem, not Nasser. And I was told that I was wrong. So I really, honestly, I, I was brainwashed into believing that, that I was the problem and that uh, I must have a dirty mind. Wait, so your coach, someone you looked up to, that you trusted, told you you were wrong? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't realize that she was such good friends with him. I think had I known that back then, I would have never 
said anything to her. She was like, no, you must be misunderstanding. I've known Larry for years and years. There's no way he would ever do anything that was inappropriate. Larissa says she hoped the coach would have her back, but she says Clagus ended up stabbing her in the back. She did not tell my parents. Instead, she called Larry Nassar and told him that I told her about it. She says at her next treatment, Nassar was primed for a fight. I was really scared at that next appointment, what he was gonna say, and, but he came in, closed the door, sat on his little chair and rolled up to me and he said, so I talked to Kathy and she told me about your conversation and he tried to reassure me that it was a medical treatment and it was to help me get better. And I said, well, I don't wanna get anybody in trouble. I said, I'm so sorry. I, it's all a big misunderstanding. It's all my fault. Oh my gosh. And then I hopped back up on the table and he continued to abuse me. And I could tell he was angry with me. It was, that time it was much more harsh and like, rough and I just felt like he was mad at me. I had to convince myself that I had a dirty mind and you know I wasn't the only girl that came forward that night to Kathy. There was two of us that said that he was doing this. Larissa says Coach Clagus called a team meeting and actually shamed her. She even brought in some of my teammates and asked them in front of me if they had ever felt uncomfortable with what how Nassar treated them and they they like a couple at a time right in front of me and it was the most humiliating embarrassing situation and I think that that contributed to the fact that I never wanted to speak of it again and as we now know Larissa isn't the only one I remember the first time that he gave me the quote treatment Morgan McCall was then a 12 year old aspiring ballerina with a serious injury why did you first go in to see Larry Nasser? I was in the ballet studio and I did a move called a tour jeté, which is like a flippy, jumping, turning thing. And when I landed, I was in immediate pain and I collapsed. I had uh, torn both of my hip flexors. He was friendly. He was really warm, inviting, looking back, overly friendly but I felt like I was in good hands upon meeting him. So when Larry Nassar started being inappropriate, did you just immediately think, it's okay, it's my doctor? I was very uncomfortable and I was kind of confused as to what was even happening, but I kept my mouth shut because I just figured it was what I had to do. If you feel comfortable saying, what was the treatment? Digital penetration, and inappropriate touching in the vaginal region. And this was for your hips? Yeah, he explained to me that a lot of muscles connect and tendons connect to something called your pubic symphysis. He used a lot of like medical mumbo jumbo to kind of, I, looking back, confuse me and make me think it was okay. And what she says shocked her the most, that Larissa and others called him out long before she was born and Michigan State University officials didn't do anything about it. And they could have stopped it, and they didn't. Do you feel like they should be prosecuted as well, the people who knew and didn't do anything? Absolutely, absolutely. They sponsored my assault. Olympians Gabby Douglas, Michaela Maroney, and Ali Raisman share gold medals, but they also share a dark secret. Their doctor, Larry Nasser, sexually molested them. Michaela says it even happened right before a competition, seen by millions around the world. But did officials seemingly look the other way at a pattern of abuse? At the 2016 Olympic Games, the president of the USOC said that the USOC would not conduct an investigation and even defended USA Gymnastics as one of the leaders in developing policies to protect athletes. Eventually, the entire board of USA Gymnastics would resign in the wake of the worst sex scandal in sports history. Nasser abused more than 250 young women, like Emma Ann Miller. In that time, I didn't think that anything was wrong. I just knew I didn't like how it felt. 
Emma Ann and her mother Leslie are speaking exclusively to Crime Watch Daily in their first ever television interview. Emma Ann's last encounter with the creepy doctor was when she was only 13, just hours before Michigan State University suspended him. As far as you know, do you think you were the last one he saw? I think I was very possibly the last child that he ever assaulted. Mm -hmm. In the office, at least. Remember, Emma Ann was born long after his presumed first victim, Larissa Boyce, who had reported Nasser's sexual abuse more than 20 years earlier. It just angers me to just to know that people knew back in 97 and nobody did anything. Leslie says because Nasser was her doctor too, she felt comfortable taking Emma Ann to see him for a back problem. When I was pregnant, he was my doctor for quite a few years. Emma Ann grew up knowing him. So would you say you had a pretty trusting relationship with him? I would say yes, I, I, I really trusted him. But that trust quickly evaporated. Are there any instances that stick out in your mind of things that happened to you that you're willing to share? Like I remember one like, specific time I had these like floral leggings on. They're my favorite ones. And he asked me to change out of them and I was like, oh, okay. So I went to the bathroom and I put on these shorts that he gave me. Like right when I opened the door, he was standing outside of the door and he told me that um, my mom said that he could take me into this supply room. So he took me in there and he worked on my back. Sorry. <laughs> um, that's when he started all of that stuff. And then, I don't know, it really stuck out to me because I was, I was questioning why my mom wasn't there. And meanwhile, I'm in this room wondering, gosh, you know, why is she taking so long? What's going on? All to find out that she was being molested. At that point, Leslie's intuition was flashing red. But in the pit of my stomach, something just didn't feel right. I remember looking at him and just saying to him, if anybody ever hurt my daughter, I'd kill him. I would absolutely kill him. And I remember the look on his face just turned and he just, you know, looked at me like, and I thought, that was so odd, that look. He was such a master manipulator. Like He, he really made you th believe that he cared about you. I know all about manipulation. That my, my captors, both of them, key, huge manipulators. What were some of the ways that he would manipulate you? He put my picture up on his wall with all of the like, other dancers and skaters and Olympians. And it might sound dumb, but like it made me feel special. And in their eyes, Nasser was extremely special. The gymnastics doctor with a gold medal reputation. Lauren Hopkins covers the world of gymnastics for her website, thegymter.net. He was known as the gymnastics god, the, the gymnastics doctor who like everyone would have given up anything to see. He was the guy who when Carrie Strug got injured in 96, um, he was waiting right there. After that injury, Carrie went on to win Olympic gold, inspiring many young women like Christine Harrison. But Christine's career as a gymnast and soccer player came crashing down after she fractured her spine. And what were your first impressions of him? He seemed very nice. Um, he acted like he knew exactly what he was doing. There was a line to see him. I was like, I can't believe like I'm in line to see the Olympic doctor. I was bragging about it after I left. In this exclusive interview, Christine tells me the abuse began later when she broke her pelvis. What was it that made you feel uncomfortable? You know, at first I had questioned, like, you know, why isn't he wearing gloves? And then when he started to do the digital penetration, I just remember thinking, Oh my goodness, like what is happening? And I just remember looking off to the ceiling and being too scared to turn around to see even if he was aroused. And what's even worse, Christine says it happened with her mother in the exam room. So when he was doing the inappropriate touching, um, he was talking to my mom. So I wasn't, I was like, oh, well, if he's talking to my mom, you know, he must not, not be doing something bad. What a monster. Yeah, that's exactly what he is. I'm just very upset 
You can probably tell like I'm like still angry. I think you're entitled to be angry. But what will make you angry is when you hear what Emma Ann says Michigan State University did to her. Even after his arrest on multiple sexual misconduct charges, the school continued billing her for Nasser's so-called treatments. When I read that MSU was still billing you for the sessions where your daughter had been abused, there's no amount that can ever make recompense, but they should be paying you for the damages that you've experienced. Yeah, exactly. That's just, I mean, abhorrent. Emma Ann bravely revealed the billing fiasco when she testified against Nasser. My mom is still getting billed for appointments where I was sexually assaulted. Hours after her testimony, MSU officials announced they would no longer bill Nasser survivors. The university emphatically denies any cover-up. The chorus of women who say Dr. Larry Nasser molested them has reached a crescendo. If anyone deserves to never see the light of day again, it is this man. That's gymnast Lindsay Shewitt testifying by video link during Nasser's sentencing. He hasn't changed. He won't change. Now, Lindsay speaks to Crime Watch Daily via Skype from South Korea, where she teaches school. I just want to scream it from the mountaintops now, just to say this is what I've been saying for 18 years. I mean, he deserves thousands of years in prison. Let's be honest. If anybody deserves not to see the light of day again, it's this guy. He's the worst of the worst. Lindsay went to Nasser when she was a 16-year-old with hip pain. On her first visit, she says Nasser delivered what she now believes was a rehearsed speech. You might hear some things from other parents. Some parents think that I'm too hands-on or that I touch my patients too much but that's only because I really care about my pa patient's health. He told us not to worry and that he was the best doctor out there and then he reached back and slapped me on my butt a couple of times. Lindsay tells us that slap was only the beginning of Nasser's sick abuse. His hands just kept moving further and further. His hands were up under my shorts um, where my mother couldn't see um, and I remember him starting to touch like my panty line, the edge of my underwear and thinking, okay, this is starting to get really uncomfortable. He ended up penetrating me fully. And at that point I sort of just went limp. Lindsay says she was terrified, but she had a plan to stop him. When he started to penetrate me, I screamed out really loudly in the office and And he stopped touching me and, you know, said, are you okay? And I, I told him no. And he said, well, we're, we're just gonna try it again. We're gonna try to make you feel better. And so he went back to doing what he was doing. He went back to penetrating me. And I knew that I was just gonna have to make a huge scene. And I remember being in the hallway screaming and crying and them not allowing me to go into the waiting room because I was so loud. And get this, Lindsay says she later discovered her pain wasn't from an injury, but from something else. It clearly said in my medical record, she has this positive blood test. She needs to see a rheumatologist. We don't think that this problem is of an osteopathic nature. Judge Rosemary Aquilina was very moved by Lindsay's compelling testimony. And Lindsay, I've heard your scream. I will make a tough decision. I hope you will like it. Another one of Nasser's victims, gymnast Ashley Yost, was also there to support her sister survivors. I needed to be there in order to like make things more of a reality, but I also needed to let the media see it so that he couldn't have some type of power over me. I shouldn't feel ashamed of wanting to hide my face or needing to hide my face. I honestly don't remember the first time it happened. It could have been anywhere from 14 to 16. The young gymnast tells Crime Watch Daily she had an injured foot and saw the world-renowned doctor. 
hearing stories of like how he could heal gymnasts and stuff like that, we thought we would give him a try. And it turns out he fixed my heel injury. He just came off as this really funny doctor who, who knew what he was doing. He like, he made it seem as if he knew his stuff. But as Ashley progressed in her career, she was plagued by more injuries. My injuries kind of got a little worse and worse, and so I did end up seeing him for my back. Ashley says Nasser started by working on other muscles. He said that I would feel some pressure around my butt. And he had angled himself away, or he had put towels over me so that nothing could be seen. It never clicked within my mind that, you know, he didn't need to use penetration at all in order for me to feel the same result that I would without it. Her story is disturbingly similar to the accusations of the other 250 plus young women. In November of 2016, after two decades of abuse, authorities finally moved in and the evidence against Nasser was overwhelming. One year later, instead of going to trial, Nasser pleaded guilty to seven counts of sexual assault. It was time for Nasser to face the judge with the nickname Barracuda. The doctor who calls himself the body whisperer sits in stunned silence as the young women he abused are shouting out to the world, Larry Nassar is a monster. The more than 250 survivors of the predator have been waiting for this moment, his sentencing. No matter what Larry was supposed to be treating on me over the years, usually my ankles or my knees, his fingers always seem to find their way inside me, never once wearing gloves. And Nasser is forced to sit through and listen to the words of every survivor who speaks. You have pissed off the wrong army of women. Thank you. Nasser seems to be hiding his face from his accusers. Why? Not because he's moved, but because he says he's uncomfortable. Incredibly, the predator writes a bizarre six-page letter in which he complains about having to listen to the stories of his victims. Judge Rosemary Aquilina reads it to the courtroom. I'm very concerned about my ability to be able to face witnesses this next four days mentally. Her look of disgust says it all. Would you like to withdraw your plea? No, Your Honor. Because you are guilty, aren't you? Are you guilty, sir? I accept my plea, exactly. He later tries to apologize. I'm so horribly sorry that this was like a match to turn into a forest fire out of control. And, um, and I pray the rosary every day for forgiveness for their, I want them to heal. I want this community to heal. But his woe is me apology seems to fall on deaf ears. And now it's time for the moment every one of his victims wants to hear. I wouldn't send my dogs to you, sir. The judge shows why her nickname is Barracuda Aquilina. As much as it was my honor and privilege to hear the sister survivors, it is my honor and privilege to sentence you. Because, sir, you do not deserve to walk outside of a prison ever again. You have done nothing to control those urges, and anywhere you walk, destruction will occur. Aquilina gives him the maximum. Sir, I'm giving you 175 years, which is 2,100 months. <laughs> I've just signed your death warrant up to 175 years in a cold, damp cell. But it's not over yet, far from it. Nasser faces sentencing in another court in another county. I really feel that my entire family has gone through hell and back these last few months because of what Larry Nasser did to both of my sisters and I years ago. And this father of three daughters Nasser molested is waiting. I would for ask you to, as part of this sentencing, to grant me five minutes in a locked room with this <laughs> demon. I have Would a you do that? 
I, I, that is not yes how our. Yes or no? No, sir, I can't. Would you give do me that. one minute? <laughs> I, you know that I can't do that. That's not how our legal well, system I'm gonna have to <laughs> Randy Margraves lunges at Nasser. Bailiffs tackle him. The judge refuses to fine or jail him because she says she understands his anguish. In the wake of the Nasser scandal, MSU's president, Luanna Simon, resigned, issuing this statement to the survivors, I can never say enough that I am so sorry that a trusted, renowned physician was really such an evil, evil person who inflicted such harm under the guise of medical treatment. Simon says she will cooperate with the investigation by Michigan's attorney general, who vows to find out who knew what and when. This guy is, is a monster, and what he did under this guise, this hoax of providing medical treatment to young women shocks the conscience. And coach Kathy Clagus was suspended and later retired from MSU, saying the allegations against Nasser deeply disturbed her and says she's extremely distressed by the claims she tried to stonewall those reports of sexual misconduct. Crime Watch Daily made repeated calls to Clagus for a comment, but never heard back. That's no shock to Nasser's presumed first victim, Larissa Boyce. Has your former coach ever apologized to you? No. But you like her too. Yeah, I would love to I would love for her to do the right thing. Nasser's total sentence adds up to centuries. 60 years in the federal pen for possession of child pornography. 40 to 175 years for seven counts of sexual assault in Ingham County. And 40 to 125 years for three counts of sexual assault in Eaton County. Nasser is 54 years old. When he leaves prison, it'll be in a pine box. Some days I don't want to get out of bed. Some days I just don't want to have to face having to think about it. I would say you're entitled <laughs> to those days in bed. <laughs> Do you think that you will ever be able to forgive him? Mm. Do you think there's anything he could do to gain your forgiveness? There's nothing that he could say to me for me to forgive him. People say, like, forgive and forget. If I have to forgive him, sure. But I'm not going to be able to forget about it. And in an ironic coincidence, the Federal Bureau of Prisons lists Nasser as an inmate in the same prison where the man who kidnapped our Elizabeth Smart is spending his life behind bars, a high-security facility in Arizona.